I was told that I was going to become nothing more than a waitress and a whore. You deserve to be free and you deserve yes. to share what is your truth. I did not step down from Miss Indiana USA. And I also did not step down from Miss Universe Ireland. How do you not become a victim? This is the first time I'm speaking. Uh, the first interview that I am doing in two years. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to a new episode on the Divinely Disruptive Podcast. I'm your host, Jane Powers. This podcast is all about leveling up your life and creating space to dream again. Today in our studio, we have a very special friend and leader in every industry. I mean, she is taking over. She has experience in modeling, pageantry, the finance world, and she truly exemplifies the term beauty and brains, and the list can go on. So before I forget all the good things that she does, please welcome Brittany Mason to our studio. Hi, thank you so much, oh. Jane. What an introduction. Yes. Thank you so much. And honestly, I'm getting chills already. We haven't even started, but what an honor. I mean, I feel so just, it's a privilege to be here. I mean, I know you as a friend and as a sister, but beyond that, I'm just humbled by your story. Thank I don't you. even know where to start. So for people that don't know your story, tell me a little bit about your childhood and your upbringing. Oh, goodness. I know it is hard to know where to start. So I guess we can, you know, kind of go back to my roots the very beginning. Um, I'm originally from a very small little town in Indiana. I'm a country girl, Midwest. And um, most of my family uh, lived in Markleville, about population 368 people and honestly I I dealt with a lot of trauma and adversity at a very young age I grew up very fast if I'm being totally real and raw and honest with you um I grew up very fast and I experienced a lot of things at a, a young age that you know no child really should and there came a point where I realized that I wanted to get out and make something you know that there was a life outside of that. And I wanted to see the world. I wanted to create a whole different life for myself. And um, I, I was heavily influenced, of course, I think like most people back then, um, by the, you know, the magazines that were being sent to the house. And I'd flip through those magazines. And I think I was about 12 years old. And I'd say, you know, I want to be that girl. She looks happy. She, she's got it all. I want to be that girl. And um, I had no idea how to get into modeling. I had no idea, but I, I just knew that I wanted to, you know, get out. And so I started reaching out to like local photographers and I was like, I know that I need to like get my photo taken. And so I reached out to like local wedding photographers and started like trying to just get experience in front of the camera. Um, entered a model search at 14 and I was scouted by four different agencies, one in Japan, New York. My parents were like, absolutely no. Um, and so I was pretty upset about that because I was like, how am I going to get out of here? You know, um, like I said, the environment that I was in as a kid wasn't really the best. I, I, we lived in, we didn't have much money. One of my earliest childhood memories actually was, um, learning to count like pennies, you know, because we would wrap them up in those little coin things and that's how we would buy our food or, you know, a lot of our food came from donations from the church um and you know secondhand clothing um there was it was it was tough for a long time i one of my earliest memories also i i remember being um in the store and standing in line and we were trying to buy food for for dinner and they wouldn't accept our payment because we hadn't rolled the coins up in those little you know in those little paper rollers and someone in the um in the back of the line a man gave like slipped me twenty dollars to get to my mom uh so we could eat that night but you know so like that was like my first introduction to to money and always living in this this mindset of fear and scarcity that was like really the environment that i was in uh being raised in was this fear mentality but like i said i knew that there had to be something more out there for me and so um i 
there was a time I tried to get emancipated. The justice system in the state of Indiana is pretty, um, not not just in Indiana, but many places, corrupt. Unfortunately, the legal system failed me um, in a few different ways. And so I was like, okay, back to square one. How am I going to get out of here? Uh, you know, you're not a legal adult until you're 18. So I was like, what am I going to do? Modeling really did seem like the the ticket out. Um, you know, I and then I learned about pageantry. And I learned that Miss Teen USA at the time, if you win, you actually are on a salary. It's a job. They pay for school. You get an apartment in New York City. And I thought, well, oh, my goodness, I think that might be my ticket out. Um, you know, but there was no guarantee. So I actually took out, I actually, this is so wild. I took out an application for the army and an application for a pageant at the same time. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get out of here one of, one of these ways. And, um, I ended up winning state for the pageant and, uh, I had, I competed in just a, a used, a used dress an old swimsuit that I had had that I had actually gone swimming in instead of like spending all this money on like competition wardrobe. I didn't have a trainer. I didn't have a coach. I didn't have anything. I had no idea the world that I was walking into, but I ended up winning this pageant teen Indiana and then ended up winning nationals and then representing our country at top model of the world. And at that point I was only 17 years old my whole life changed within a matter of four months. And then I started, you know, traveling the world. I started signing contracts and it really did open up my whole life. Um, my whole life changed and ended up moving to New York, signed with the modeling agency there and um, at, yeah, by myself. And it was it was a wild ride. So crazy <sighs> journey. That was kind of like how it all started. I'm like, that just I know, sounds it was, like it was a lot. <laughs> like, even though that was a big portion of your childhood, your early mm. development, I'm I just have to take a moment because that story and journey, that sounds like somebody's lifetime. And the fact that you accomplished <laughs> still all just a that. Teenager. Yeah, like at <laughs> 17. I mean, it says so much about who you are, Brittany. And I just have to say this again. I feel so blessed to know you because regardless of what you promote, what you put on social media. I know you and you are such an empowering queen and Thank you really you. are such an example of beauty and brains. Like I can't tell you this enough because people watching and listening, I wanted this moment to be just very real and raw because, yeah. you know, suicide is going up, mm -hmm. depression, people on medication is going up. Mm -hmm. People need to hear your story, Brittany, because it's not just about look at us now, but see the sacrifices. Yeah. And so yeah. for you to go through all that hardship. I mean, thank God you made it out because not a lot of people can say true. they grew up in poverty or grew up where <laughs> you had to roll pennies. Like I know exactly I, what you're talking about. Yeah, but yeah, you humble know. beginnings. Yeah. So my God, I have never been in pageantry, but for those maybe, you know, maybe they got a little excited when you talked about the pageantry world and yeah. modeling. What does it take to be good at it? Oh my goodness. It is a lot of sacrifice. People don't really understand the pageant world. It really is its own world, its own community, and it can be cutthroat, but there also is a sense of sisterhood, and I've made lifelong friends through it. Danny, actually, she's a lifelong friend. She competed a year before I did. I competed in 2008. She competed in 2007, you know, at Miss USA, um, and it, it, transformed so many areas of my life. I learned so many life skills that are invaluable. And, you know, whether you you win an actual title or you're just going through the competition itself, you learn so much about yourself. And um, that's why I love it. I am passionate about pageantry. And it's funny because it gets so much criticism, whether, you know, is this still relevant? And um, my answer is yes, absolutely. When the right leaders are in place, it is absolutely relevant and it can it can transform a young woman's life. I am testament to that. I, my story is a testament to that. In many ways, it it just completely changed my life. It taught me life skills and etiquette that, you know, I just would not 
have been able to learn anywhere else. Life experience is the best teacher for sure. And ironically, there's no reason I'm in love with you and Danny, by the way. <laughs> and I don't know if it is the, you know, manners and just the way you guys carry yourself. Like the obvious is you guys are beautiful, but there's something magical when I'm with you guys. And oh. I just really honor women who have poise. And even if they weren't raised with it, the fact that you were able to develop all those life skills, like I want to be around women. I feel honored to be around. So Brittany, I feel um, honored to be well, in your I'm presence. I'm honored you know? to be around you. I'm yeah. just so proud of you for building this platform for women too. And I think it's so important that we, you know, support other women. And that was always my message, you know, as a director with the Miss Universe organization and um, in everything that I do, I, I think we need to root for each other, cheer each other on, clap for one another because, you know, clap for one another and root for one another because one day it's going to be your turn and don't you want people to clap for you you know so i think we just have to lift e each other up and i i really do feel that um if women like that that cattiness and that that mean girl mentality i think having you know that being prevalent for so long i really feel like it's that that has held us back if we just look at ourselves and our own power and what we are capable of i mean there is nothing we can't do we're unstoppable really and truly i mean the feminine the feminine power i'm i'm proud to be a woman and have amazing women around me like yourself no and thank you so much because i remember when i moved to vegas Brittany. i'm not gonna lie i was very overwhelmed yeah. and You've gotten to know me and how I move. I'm actually a girly tomboy. And I think every woman, they need to tap into the masculine part, but also yes. the feminine part. I think it's a mm -hmm. dance. So to be around, again, women like yourself, I want people listening and watching. It takes work. Yeah. Like we have to do the work as individuals, whether it's healing, getting a coach, getting mm -hmm. therapy, you know, going on a sabbatical if needed. And so tell me what it's like to be you in Vegas. And I say this humbly, Brittany, because I'm like, you can you can notice you like a mile away. When you walk <laughs> into a room, your spirit just glows. So Thank it can't you. be easy, but like how do you navigate so gracefully? Oh my gosh. What a what a question. I try to always stay centered with myself, you know? And I try to I try to take moments for myself, you know, early in the beginning of the day and, you know, decompress at night as well. Take that that time and be centered in yourself. And in acting, we call it the moment before before you walk into a room. You have that moment, that moment before. OK, this is my intention. I'm setting my intention. And, you know, so I you know, depending on what the environment is or the situation, you know, I want to make sure that I, I have my goals set, um, you know, and that uh, Don Baker, I learned this from Don Baker. He was an amazing um, media and communication coach that I worked with many years ago. Uh, and he he taught, you know, the that you have to you do have to be a bit vulnerable and, you know, be open, lead with an openness and so uh, I try to I do wear my heart on my shoulder, which can be good and bad. But I try to I try to be open and, and stay centered always with myself, yeah. stay true to myself. Authenticity, I think, is so important. And, and it shows because I remember when we first met, we were at, you know, a private event. Yes. And I remember we met through a mutual friend. And regardless of what you were going through at the time, Brittany, I just remember there's just something mysterious but mighty inside of you. And I remember after that night, I'm Small like, but mighty. yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I got to stay connected. I got to get Irish to way. know her more, uh, <laughs> deeper. And so not only is it important to empower one another with the right spaces and the right people, I feel like it is important to get deeper because mm -hmm. it's easy to say, OK, Jane, you do makeup, so you're good for that. Or you got a podcast, so you're good for this. But I love that we were able to build a friendship beyond anything else. I mean, of course we can help each other, but you know, you invited me over, we just talked and got to know each other. And I always feel so relaxed and grounded around you. Good. And that says so much about you. you. And so, um, you know, talk to me also just about the importance of boundaries, yeah. you know, intuitive empaths like ourselves. It's so easy to carry the weight of the world and yeah. the disease and, and projection of others. So let's tap into that. It's tough out there for empaths. <laughs> I will say when you're an empath, 
it is as if you literally attract narcissists. I feel like I should have a PhD in narcissism. Anybody, everyone out there really should learn about narcissism. It's on the rise and those people are dangerous. Dr. Romney, I, I say she's my personal guru. She's incredible. Um, so boundaries, boundaries uh, are key. Drink your water and, and keep your boundaries. I think that's what Gabrielle Union said. Um, but I, I agree. I mean, that's, it's, it's so important to protect your soul, your spirit, your peace. Um, you know, you have to put on your own oxygen mask first, fill up your own cup first. Otherwise, you have nothing else to give to other people. And unfortunately, I learned that the hard way. I am I am such a giving and generous person where I or I have a history of that. But I through what I have been through in the last few years, I mean, I had everything taken from me. I lost everything in the last couple of years. And um yeah, what happened is it's it's pretty it it's unspeakable. It's it's horrific what was done to me, what was done to my business. Um and so I had to learn the hard way. Uh you know, being more protective of of my space and who I'm giving to. I literally would give the clothes off of my back. I actually did. You know, I opened my home to people. I you know, opened my my closets, my wallet, my heart, everything, uh, made major sacrifices in my life for people. I was the kind of person that would literally set myself on fire to keep others warm. And now I am just not that person anymore. Now I say I am like a phoenix rising from the ashes. That's who I am. So if you, you know, if if you've proven yourself, I can I can trust you, then of course I'm going to be generous and so giving and open my home. You know, I mean, um, I, I know you're a Christian and you believe in God and the Bible says to love your neighbor. Well, I did. I loved my neighbor. I opened my home to my neighbor. But sometimes your neighbor is the one that's actually causing the problems in your home. So you have to be very careful. No, and, and thank you for sharing such a vulnerable moment, too, because the reality is, you know, I've been having these, you know, spiritual battles as well is seeing heart of gold. It's a very yeah. confusing experience. Like I know I made a joke to somebody the other day, you know, excuse my language, but I was like, <clears throat> the in the world, they're just having a party. It's another day in paradise. Yeah. Nothing bothers Sometimes them. it feels like it, <laughs> the evil is winning. Yes. And so you, you mentioned something divine too. And again, this is why the podcast is called divinely disruptive is you know, God, he gave me a gift to be able to see talent in people, see good people. But but don't get me wrong. I also had to be abused and dragged and taken advantage. So trust me, it, yeah. it, it, I feel your pain, but I also feel your resiliency and your strength, Brittany, because there are moments where I'm like, why did this happen to me? And through therapy and healing and just getting mentorship, it's like, OK, if we're still here and I told you this, you know, on a phone call too. We must be literally called to a higher purpose I because there's that. no reason we went through this and that we experienced this and that. It's like, how dare you? However, look at where we're at yeah. now. And this is why I'm so much about, you know, I know religion is very controversial. So mm -hmm. let's just tap into relationship mm -hmm. with the higher mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. I call it God. And you know how me and mm -hmm. my husband roll. We are just loving. We are accepting. We want you to feel secure and safe and we will never use anything, any yeah. power, any scripture, any, any, any writing to separate us from people. And I feel like the true, you know, godly people, if you will, or just true divine mm -hmm. spirits in this world, you will feel through their action, yes. not their word, right? Mm -hmm. Politics, religion. Again, I got to say it again action. because there's a lot of division, but action mm -hmm. is what really matters. So, you know, people listening and watching, I feel like they probably got triggered, but also touched by your story just even as you're opening up right now is okay how do we still rise up how yeah. do we still overcome how do we still forgive how do we let go of shame and guilt because Brittany I'm it's telling you it's a journey you, it's it, not, it's it doesn't journey. end so so tell me how you keep rising up like I <laughs> admire that because Thank people you. who even know one yeah. percent of your life like truly it's wild it's wild <laughs> <laughs> crazy 
I I mean, and I and I do a lot of self work, and you know, I've I've worked with therapists. I've done. I've explored a lot of different type of uh, you know holistic healing practices, from acupuncture to biofeedback and neurofeedback, which people do not talk about enough. Um, I've I've tried different things, and I actually had a therapist literally had to draw out a map to see all of it. I mean, it's it's wild. I've had a I really have had a wild crazy journey. Um, but I feel that in life we all have a choice and you know, you cannot decide the cards that you're dealt, but you really do decide how you play them. And, you know, I I can't help what perhaps, you know, maybe the situation I was born into or where I came from, but you know, I I played my cards and I'm pretty proud actually of how I played them. I played them the best that I could and um, I'm grateful for the life that I have lived, even honestly, even the the struggles and the bad stuff. And I, that's so crazy because I never with what's happened in the last couple of years, it has truly been the most difficult years of my adult life. The last couple of years, the level of greed and betrayal that I have experienced is it's unspeakable. I mean, um, but. I just believe you you've got to you've got to play your cards and um you know realize that you can nothing the limits the only limits in life are the ones that you set on yourself anything is possible I mean coming from what I came from to my whole life changing within such a short amount of time you know and I I built this amazing career this amazing life where I I traveled the world I worked with the most incredible people, icons, my role models like Naomi Campbell and, you know, Andre Leon Talley and shot with Patrick de Michelier and just, I mean, like had the most amazing experiences and, um, you know, fell in love and built an empire and then lost it all and then had to reinvent myself, you know, and move back to the United States during a pandemic. And um, it's been a wild, a wild journey. But one thing I want people to remember and take away the main thing is to, you know, really get out of your own way. My biggest insecurity was always that I didn't finish my degree, that I didn't finish college. You know, I I had a great career as a model for 20 years and, you know, started my business, um, you know, my production company and everything in Ireland. And but I I was so insecure about not finishing my degree that it really held me back and because of that I gave away my power and I trusted certain people with you know the legal end or the financial financial things you know because they had more experience in that or that's what they went to college for or, you know that's what they knew and so and that's where I made a huge mistake and really made myself vulnerable to people that I never should have. I, I trusted the wrong people, unfortunately. You know, the people that I loved and trusted the most, unfortunately, really took advantage of me and took everything they could. So, yeah. But Oof. it is what it is. You know, it, had those things not happened, I would not, been for, I would not have been forced to, you know, reinvent myself and then go into finance and do what I'm doing now. And I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing now. So... So I have to ask, I'm like, before we even dive into finance, I'm like, mm -hmm. you, you hit something in the nail there. I was like, I forgot about the pandemic. I think a lot of us tried to forget, yeah. but I, no, your yeah. story right now is, is very, like I said, is, is very relatable to more people than you think. Mm -hmm. So again, you have the courage to share. So again, thank you for that is I do feel like <sighs> a lot of times we're victims to our, our, our own life and a lot of people, including myself, we built this life, we had a vision, and sometimes our life doesn't end up the way we vision. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say, oh, well, I guess God has no plans or the universe has nothing greater. But you're a perfect example, Brittany, of somebody that built the empires, built the castles, or built the dream life. And, you know, things may have happened, but you're a perfect mm -hmm. example of decision making to also believe, not get in the way, your mindset to rebuild. Because a lot of people right now, I don't think they have the courage yet to rebuild. Right. But we can't just say, you know, stay stuck in the past. So I want to know yeah. how all these things brought you to finance, because I know we had a chat about finance. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, how are you this gorgeous, this talented 
and you're in finance. <laughs> I mean, I, I know how to do like yes. a W-9 form, but that's it's about a man's it. world too. But oh my goodness, oh my I am so proud of, you know, my firm, bon- Bonnerian Capital. I am chief of staff uh, for Bonnerian Capital. We're an alternative investment firm, all women. Very proud of that. So, and we're just shaking things up in the industry. And actually, we are an Irish American company. So it's really funny. Just like I said, I really do think that things happen for a reason because there's so many syn- synchronicities, like t- too many coincidences. And so she found me because uh, my boss found me because she saw how I built my brand and built my business in Ireland and really built the pageant culture in Ireland. So, uh, it's it's kind of come full circle. But I went into finance because I lost everything. And the people that I had trusted the most, you know, my partners really took advantage of me. So I, you know, and I was in an environment for a long time, like I said, where I I didn't believe in myself in that sense. And it had power over me. And I don't like to live my life with anything having power over me. I really do believe in if you're afraid of something, you've got to run full force towards it. I really feel that sometimes that is life telling you that you need to face that head on. You got to tackle it. You've got to you've got to go towards your fears because on the other side of that is freedom. And so that was the it's been the best thing that I ever did. I was terrified. And I think I cried every single day for months while I was preparing to get my my federal law license as a banker, you know, and um, but I'm so glad that I did it. So, yeah, I just for the longest time, I I didn't have the mindset of that um, to believe in myself enough to to do it. And it's crazy to say that because my whole life was my career was teaching other women to believe in themselves. Um, the thing is, is that I didn't have a lot of encouragement either in it. Um, I was told that I was going to become nothing more than a waitress and a whore. So, and I'm the kind of person that you tell me I can't do something. Okay. Okay. Have a seat and enjoy your last show because you're going to choke on your words, baby. (laughs) That's my philosophy. So, No, and even (laughs) as you're sharing, I'm like getting chills too because the reality is, you know, we grow up watching Disney and all these movies like, oh, life is picture perfect. You have the perfect family. You meet the right people. Mm -hmm. And supposedly everything's supposed to just magically go your way. And like you, yeah. But the, but the real resilience, Brittany, like even as you're talking, it's crazy because I know it's your story, but as you share your journey and I look at you right now, I'm like, who are you talking about? Because (laughs) it's not you, but honestly, For me to even have the privilege, and again, I just have to keep saying the word honor because it is an honor for any human being to go through and grow through what you did. Mm -hmm. Like you literally have to be a beautiful freak from God because (laughs) there's no way you were just accidentally born on this earth to just go with the flow. I mean, sure, at, at a moment, but I know you were born a leader and, you know, I'm no psychic, but I will tell you right now, Brittany, like face to face, you were made to lead and to impact and all the haters or all the naysayers again get some popcorn go to costco get the family pack okay (laughs) please keep watching because this is like sequel sequel (laughs) hundreds but yeah big things are going to unleash through you and we all know this you have to really do the work to be able to share your traumas to share the journeys and not get stuck in it so I just have to ask because I know people listening yeah. and watching they're like but how do you overcome ask it like away. how do you not become a victim because it could be something so small from even a heartbreak like mm. how do you not stay mm. in the past and you know what honestly it's one thing to deal with a heartbreak and it's a whole nother to deal with a, a type of betrayal that comes from someone that maybe was you know a mentor family um, in your lab partner for 20 years, you know, it's a whole nother, a whole nother different, a different type and, and level of betrayal in that way. Um, how do I continue to, uh, keep showing up? I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, it was really hard the last few years because, you know, you go and you look on Instagram and I, 
you know, during 2021 and 2022, those were the scariest times of my life um, as an adult. And you can look through all the stuff publicly. I I kept a smile on my face. I showed up to everything. But the truth was, is I was literally homeless and I was in conversations with um, I was in conversations with a woman's shelter about possibly going into a, a woman's shelter. And so I was moving from Airbnb. I was going from whatever friends, you know, would help me. Um, you know, I couldn't access my own personal belongings. I had friends that were li- literally, you know, offering me, yeah, a, a place to to stay for a little while and giving me clothes to wear, feeding me. I couldn't access my anything. I couldn't access my money. I couldn't access I I didn't have access to my own belongings. I mean, it was and then AT&T broke so many federal laws. They actually gave access to my phone to someone who was stalking and threatening me. I was and that was happening. That happened for a year, for a year, and I didn't even know. Um I was getting threatening messages. I was having things financed in my name. Um in two different countries. Uh, It was scary. I had a, it was like people saw that I was vulnerable and it was like they saw, you know, because they see this public lifestyle that I live, they think that I had all this money or something and they just came out of the woodworks to try to get whatever they could from me. Um, I had a designer try to extort me for like twenty thousand dollars i had someone was trying to frame me for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars um i had my business was sold off um my the u.s entity and that's a big thing that i really i want people to know that i did not step down from miss indiana usa And I also did not step down from Miss Universe Ireland. I didn't. I fought like hell to try to protect and preserve those my brand. That was my baby. Moxie was my legacy. Moxie was my my baby. I it meant everything to me. I started using the word Moxie as a tribute to my grandfather, an uncle, and a friend of mine who actually was murdered during the pandemic, who was a business mentor of mine that helped me produce my very first show that went happened in 2014. I I have receipts of selling Moxie merchandise back in 2014, 2015. Um, so much proof that that was my business. And so um, it's heartbreaking to trust someone with your life and to then find out that they were really making deals behind your back um, and lying about it and just allowed it to go on. I mean, there's a lot of things that I've discovered and it finally took me to stop blindly trusting people and to just do, you know, do my own due diligence and say, you know what, I'm, I'm done. I've got to, you know, what is the truth here? And really, really digging into the truth. And, um, you know, Miss USA, finally, you know, they shared some documents with me showing, um, you know, that I uh, was removed as director. I have proof. I mean, I wouldn't share any of this stuff if I did not have proof to back up what I'm saying. And, um, that's what's heartbreaking. My legacy, my my life's work that I built has been severely damaged and in many ways too, you know. So it's it's it's, like, it's hard to know where to start. Yeah, I know. It's it, like a it movie is, right now and, as and we're talking. I mean, I mean and I it's it's insane. And honestly, I have been afraid to speak. This is why I, you know, so much happened to To me and to my business, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it felt like a freaking conspiracy that there were just like, what is going on? You know, Um, so many people wanted a piece of me and a piece of my business and a piece of what I what I had. I mean, 
I almost, I, I got my great, great, great grandmother's wedding ring back. But even that, I almost, that was trying to be kept from me. Like it was insanity. Like I, I couldn't access, you know, I'm still trying to get back a, um, a painting from my grandfather that he gave me before he died. It's like the only thing I have from him. And I'm still trying to get that back. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's insane. I just, I feel lucky to be alive. Um, especially because I was being stalked and threatened for so long. And then also anyone who was trying to help me during that time also was so, but yeah, yeah, this is the first time I'm speaking, uh, the first interview that I am doing in two years and I've never taken a break like this in all my life since I started in the industry. No. And I just thank you for sharing. I mean, obviously it's a lot, but like you deserve to be free and you deserve to share what is your truth. And so, you know, as I'm just like sitting with you, feeling it as an empath, I'm like, man, beyond losing the riches or, or the flesh things that could be recovered, the invasion of privacy, Brittany, like I just can't even imagine like just as a human being and a right, like that was broken. And I think beyond just things being removed or things being stolen, like I can't even imagine Brittany but that just again all the backdrops from Miss Universe Ireland gone we managed to save the costumes thank god um my miss my first Miss Universe Ireland actually her family I love love her family I feel lucky that I had so many people that did rally around me you know, and it, and it really showed who was real in my life and who was just there to try to get, you know, for an agenda. And um, I can't thank the people that were there enough. Uh, and, you know, Colleen and her family, like, really, they really helped me a lot in Ireland. And um, I really appreciate them. Every Everyone that, anyone that, supported me or even even just listened to me in any way during 2021 and 2022 like yeah (laughs) yeah and as you shared too Brittany like I feel so many good things coming to you and you know if I dig deeper it's like you learned these hard life lessons but the beauty you know there's always a silver lining but when you share your story like the best days are ahead of you because so many people die or get sick and never learn these lessons to listen to your intuition to seek the truth yourself and don't Mm -hmm. assume that people are full of truth because the reality is especially right now I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. We are in hard times. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when there's greed and, and scarcity, especially financially, mm-hmm. people literally kill and destroy and steal even your neighbors. Mm-hmm. So even though, you know, one might be like, Brittany, I'm so sad for you, blah, blah, blah. No, we're not here to, to say, oh, boohoo, anybody. Mm-hmm. It's courage. The fact that now you've gained these incredible life wisdom mm-hmm. and you're actually like really speaking to me right now as well as when I moved to Vegas, I would trust people too quickly. I would literally invite them to my house Mm -hmm. and God bless my angel husband, guardian angel. He's like, Jane, I appreciate your gesture, but like, how do you know they're your best friend? How do you know they actually have your back? Mm -hmm. Why do you easily say, oh, she's my best friend or he's my best friend? I think we need to talk about this because months ago there was this um, viral post and who knows what the person's in, uh, you know, situation was, but I think he literally killed his ex-girlfriend because he was just pissed off. But again, it's more common than we want to talk about. And so again, yeah. I just, I'm so grateful to God and the universe that you are literally here. I Your am life too. is here. Same. And you know, they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So you and must funny. be. Yeah, and, and funny. funny. <laughs> I got a lot. Of, I've, I've got a lot of great humor now. So. Yes, your charisma. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so like to me because <laughs> when it becomes this, so like it, it was. I can't even talk. I mean, it was like insanity. Ooh. I'm like, oh my god. Like, yeah. what? No, I'm still sitting I, here like, oh my god. Wait, what? Yeah, I, I still can't believe I survived all that. It's really Man. crazy. So, but, but speaking of, you know, humor too, though. I mean, like, got a lot. I mean, you gotta. 
And you can't just uh, you can't just sit and wallow. I mean, it's easier said than done. I can't even tell you the amount of nights that I spent on my bathroom floor just curled over in a ball absolutely in despair. And but I I have just tried to keep reminding myself, you know, bad things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people, good things happen to bad people. It, you know, and so you can't just sit and wallow. And I didn't want to become bitter either. I, I also, one of the hardest parts also was forgiving myself for trusting the wrong people. That type of grief uh, is, a, is a difficult type of grief, forgiving yourself, um, you know. But yeah, I could go on and on. It's, I could go on and on. So like for you, what would you say are great tools and resources that you have in practice to stay grounded and peaceful? Because like I said, I admire your ability to be so grounded, like every encounter we've had, not to say anyone's life is perfect, but you are very much grounded. So I love that about you. Thank you. But what are some things that you practice daily? Meditation is huge. Meditation is huge for me. Um... I start my morning with it. I meditate before I go to bed. I am prayer. I do a lot of praying. Um, I try to be creative. Uh, creative outlets are are awesome. Also, physical outlets. So I got into cycling this year. Um, I got a I got a Peloton in January, and um, you know, so things like that. But the meditation, I feel like, and and the creative outlets are are huge for me. So. Um, I used to paint as a little girl and I've just gotten more paint sets now and I'm getting, you know, I'm planning a paint night with one of my girlfriends here. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's really important journaling because then you can go back and look at your progress. I think journaling is huge. So those are definitely, definitely what I recommend. No, I love that. Now, I mean, being in nature, yes, nature, the sunlight, it's huge. So you're a perfect example of the importance of mental health, Mm -hmm. Mm self-care, right? I mean, like I said, I do a lot of it. (laughs) So for people that are, you know, just kind of tuning in right now and they didn't realize like the journey, the grit you really had, like what kind of advice would you give, you know, these young girls or people who, you know, want to build a career, but they feel like no one believes in them or they don't have the right resources what would you kind of guide them into? All the resources are out there. I mean, we live in a very different time than what we did when I started. I mean, we didn't have social media. It was, I mean, I remember the internet was really kind of just taken off. Oh my gosh, that ages me, I know. But um, there, all the resources are out there. So it really is just putting yourself out there. And what I notice a lot when I am coaching young girls to get their careers started is there uh, a lot of them will hold themselves back until the right time or it's the perfect time or this is perfect or I want to do this before I submit to the agency or this and this and you're you are literally losing time this is the youngest you're ever going to be and so I think you just have to go for it you just have to take action don't wait for things to be perfect it's never going to be perfect you know so you have to just go for it I like that answer (laughs) because so many people, I see it every day. They make excuses and same thing, even with this podcast. We're all guilty of it. Right? I mean, I do it too. You got to just keep pushing through that. Yeah. But I love what you said. Just you're not getting any younger. I mean, sorry. It is the reality. This is the youngest we will (laughs) be ever. This moment. (laughs) So I'm so proud that you do show that reality, that there are resources. We are in a time where, thank God, social media can be our friend it can so i would like to ask i want to just pick your brain a little bit because you're fabulous how are you using you know your social media presence as well as networking in real time Mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the importance of both oh my goodness well social media social media is its own job in itself uh but i utilize social media to build my brand uh in ireland first and I mean, because when I moved to that country, I didn't, I didn't know anyone. I didn't know the culture. I, you know, and I was starting this business and I had a very short deadline to have my first show. 
Uh, so I relied on social media tremendously. So social media can be an amazing tool if you're responsible with it. Uh, I have taken social media breaks when I was going through the worst of my stuff. I did go off social media for a long time, actually. Um, but I think that social media is it's an excellent tool when when you're using it responsibly. I use it where um, now, since I've reinvented myself in this, you know, financial world, I I'm use, I'm utilizing it in that way, you know. So I actually just launched my own podcast as well, and so I'm interviewing quite a lot of people in the financial industry. I really want to pr- promote financial literacy, especially for women, um, because you know I I want to encourage women to take control over their their financial lives, their health in that way, and and help women prevent, you know, if I can help anyone prevent what happened to me, <laughs> that would be awesome. So um, I'm using social media now to get that word out there and, uh, you know, education and, and to just get the right messaging out there. It's still all about empowering other people, specifically women. I mean, that's always just been my life, my life's mission, I think, you know? No. And even though I'm married, I love that you're all about women empowerment because I was a woman empowerment then now it doesn't change but i think there's something to be said about financial literacy yeah i wanted to say that in the intro but i'm like you do so much i I don't remember i was like that was one of them okay but no you you kind of touch something very personal to me as well like growing up asian culture whether we grew up with money or not some things it's culturally and generationally um like passed down mm-hmm. so we always had this fear of not having enough mm-hmm. and so that scarcity I, mindset yeah so i want to actually talk about mm-hmm. mindsets specifically around money yes because i've been doing these like money manifestation and then my husband's like what are you listening to i'm I like be it. quiet I i'm going through hypnosis yes. and it's telling me money attracts I listen money comes every to night. me yeah and i, I was like to that. don't hate on my parade over here okay cuz clearly i'm scaring money away right now but can you dive deeper into it because you are obviously in the finance yeah. world but how does one i mean share whatever angle you want about it but like how do you get out of scarcity mindset it's... and how do you invite abundance into your yes life? i love it mm-hmm. i am all about it i mean we everyone needs to look at their relationship with money and our relationship with money is it 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 starts our foundation is built in our childhood so like i shared earlier some of my earliest memories were all about it's just not enough it we're not the scarcity mindset and so i honestly didn't break that mindset until recently and it's crazy because i look back into my 20s and there was a time i was making great money. I could have bought a house. I should have bought a house. I just, you know, I, I didn't understand money management the same, like I do now. I didn't, I didn't have all of that. And I just, it was like when I left home as a kid, it was like the moment I left my little hometown, I was like, and I was on the run and I just did not slow down until everything came to a screeching halt, you know, um, a few years ago. So, uh, but I, how do you change your mindset uh, with the, the scarcity mindset, you know, it's, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of self-work. It's something, it's repetitiveness with it. It's, and I think that's why meditation is so great. I do listen to affirmations. I actually fall asleep to, uh, wealth affirmations <laughs> every night. Um, rising higher meditation on YouTube is amazing. I love her voice. It's very soothing and relaxing. That's what I listen to every night. And it's just, it's that consistency and, and putting the work in educating yourself and immersing yourself in the information. And, um, I love vision boards. I'm a very visual person it's keeping yourself accountable in that work every day, a little bit at a time, baby steps. And, you know, you will get there. You will get there. And it's good to set goals. And once you achieve those goals, that gives you that confidence, that extra momentum. And, you know, that's that's really how it kind of changed for me. Because first I started with, I um, I got a job at Rocket Mortgage as a banker and I had zero experience. You know, this is in 2021 zero experience, but they paid for my education, thankfully. And, um, 
you know, like I said, I think I cried every single day before I got my federal license as a banker, um, you know, with the safe test. But um, I did it. And I think it's like 66 percent of people fail that test. Um, And I passed on my first try. And so that gave me, you know, more confidence than you know, my business mentors, you know, at work were inviting me to come and speak at the, the, the newbies, the rookies. And then I earned a production coin. I actually won March Madness, uh, and the only female banker, um, in that, you know, in that timeframe, um, on the West coast. So, I mean, that confidence, you know, that was giving me confidence. So set small goals, go for them, Um, work on yourself, that meditation, taking that time and catching yourself when you start to go down that road and spiral towards those negative thoughts. I'm a firm believer that, you know, if you catch yourself in a negative thought, you need to replace it with two or three positive ones because you've got to change that. You've got to flip the script on that. No, and, and that's powerful because first of all, I love seeing you glow when you talk about finance and financial literacy. Like I can tell you're all about it. So yeah. you definitely, if you don't already start doing workshops, cause I need to be invited and I Working would love to see, okay, perfect. Sorry, I spoke too soon, <laughs> but I would love to see that I, I gotta go because most people, you know, you, you just kind of hit me like, like a ton of bricks, everything in your life, if you don't work at it, it's yeah. going to affect every aspect, mm-hmm. especially finances. And so it's easy. We talk about spiritual wellness, mental health, physical, you know, the diet, the workouts. But it's interesting how the finance aspect, even if you don't deal with some traumas mm-hmm. some triggers, some childhood wounds, mm-hmm. some, you know, fake stories that you were raised about, you might stay in scarcity mindset yes. and never get out of it yes. if you don't do the work. So that's crazy. You and said you're that. Re- and re- and you're probably reinforcing it, you know, to yourself because, you know, say you have this experience or, you know, and you're, you're dwelling on that and you're reinforcing it to yourself. See, I wasn't smart enough to do this or see, I didn't understand this or this is why numbers are confusing. And, you know, so it's just, it really is repetitiveness, setting those small goals, working towards those every day, taking a step towards that. Um, and, and yes, I, my tactic really is when I catch myself spiraling, I stop and replace that with, you know, two to three, at least, uh, you know, positive affirmations, flipping that script. I'm like, gems right there. I'm yeah. like, I hope they take notes. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I think, um, you know, I know you said the word prayer as well. Mm-hmm. I feel like for me personally, you know, I do a lot of private meditation, private prayer with God. And, you know, again, I try to be very careful when I do talk about God and even my personal relationship mm-hmm. with God, mm-hmm. because yes, it can be very triggering. People what? have a lot of I- church hurt and, you know, just Religion everyone's too. Re- it's everyone, tough. I really believe everyone's relationship, whether it it's God, the universe, source, whatever you believe in or see, you know, that's personal to you. I would never judge or tell someone that you know this is what you believe or you're going to hell for this or that. I would never do that. I think it's personal. Everyone's relationship is like that is is personal. So and and that's been like one of the coolest things that I got to experience through you too is how spiritual beings we just move different. Mm -hmm. We talk different. And so hopefully the love I feel from you, you can always feel that from me. It's just so special. Um, But I also wanted to just take a moment too about, you know, how to honor yourself when you're having bad days, yeah. because again, I'd be lying to you, Brittany, if I said, well, you know, I overcame and all those people that hurt me, whatever. I don't, I don't, you know, everything's fine, but there are random days that I just, you know, whether it's falling mm. back or just having a hiccup, it mm. happens, but I do love the wisdom you shared where it's like, okay, you have one negative thought, you know, put two more, it. yeah, replace it with two, two. more. Mm-hmm. But for the people that maybe are, you know, fighting depression, anxiety, mm-hmm. cause you know, it's a very common thing and it's not just like a, a popular term. There are people who severely have depression yeah. and it's crippling, yeah. uh, for the bad days, what do you do? And, and just again, people who, who are in it right now that are like stuck in their bad yeah. days, what would you suggest them doing or guidance mm-hmm. for them? 
you know, I, I've been open with it in interviews in the past. I've, I've been very open actually about it. So it's already out there. Um, I have struggled with complex post-traumatic stress disorder because of some of the trauma that I had, you know, experienced. And so healing through that has been a, a journey. And, um, so everyone's journey is different and what works for me may not work for you. So, for me, it took a lot of different experimental things. Biofeedback, neurofeedback helped me tremendously. People don't talk about that. Um, and that was just doing research on my own. That was a huge thing that I incorporated into my healing process. You don't even have to talk about the traumatic incidents. It's, um, but it's a workout for your brain. and Your brain is a muscle. And so it's really important that you take care of it just like you do your body. And so... Um, I really encourage people who are really severely struggling, look into biofeedback, neurofeedback, look into some of these holistic type of healing practices, not just talk therapy, um, you know, and so, uh, but, but you can, you can get past it. I, you can, it's, it's, if I, I just, if I can get past what I did, I, I really believe the limit, like you, you can do anything, anything is possible. And, um, I really feel for those people that are struggling because, you know, even with what I was going through recently, I mean, there were times I just, it, I felt so helpless. I felt so helpless. I didn't, you know, didn't know if it was ever going to end, you know, or if I was going to survive, if I was going to make it. Um, I mean, there was a time I collapsed. I went to the emergency room. I had to be hook up, hooked up to IVs um, from exhaustion and hunger, you know? I, I couldn't act. Like I said, I was literally fighting for my life. And, um, but don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. And those times can make you stronger. And... Like I said, I, I would not be doing what I am now and I want to pay it forward and I want to encourage other women to really take control of their lives uh, in that way and to not ever allow someone to, um, yeah, destroy your life in the way, in the ways that my, you know, what happened to me the last few years. So I'm like, I'm sorry in advance if you start getting emails, DMs, you know, because yeah. right now I'm like, yeah. your story is really impactful. I know. And like, it's crazy because we didn't even, you know, and there's, yeah, there's yeah. so We much. said this is part one of part I know. 50. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm I like, know because, because, because there is a Hulu documentary coming out on September 29th. That is also when the next Miss USA show is. I don't think the Hulu documentary is going to talk about uh, some of the, you know, some of the main stuff. I think it's only going to be talking about the rigging scandal, not the other stuff, which I don't want to say it yeah, because I don't like, want you to get worry. demonetized yeah, yeah. on here. <laughs> it's the okay, essay, but we'll, we'll have, essay, we'll have so. like little cliff notes yeah. at the end. But, uh, but for people watching right now, you know, they're probably going to wonder how to support you. So please make sure, you know, you keep us updated on yeah. that. I'll make sure we link all your social media down below. Yeah. Uh, definitely financial literacy, whether it's in yes. person, virtual, you you gotta yes, let us know yes okay. absolutely um, and just you know your your light your love and just your ability to show up is really remarkable Brittany. um so to close it out just for now i'm yeah. like just for now uh just share with us three life lessons you would have told your younger self well it all goes back again to the you know the the limits in life are the ones that you set on yourself stop um getting in your own way get out get out of your own way and um anything is possible like how you speak to yourself is is everything i mean how you know how like i said my my biggest insecurity was because i didn't finish college well that was a big part of how i gave my power away and so you've got to believe in yourself you are enough just as you are you don't have to prove your worth to anyone. There's not a title out there. Uh, there's not a pageant title out there. There's not a, a, a magazine cover. There's not, um, you know, a wife a title as being a wife or, you know, a, a, a certain bonus at work. There is nothing out there that is going to define your worth 
but yourself. And that comes from within. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> I'm like, that was so just real and raw. And yeah, again, just to not only know you like personally, just to see you grow and see you evolve. Like you are literally flying and this is just the beginning this is just the beginning yeah so i just appreciate you showing up for us thank you and just being here being my friend i appreciate it yes yes yes, creating space so thank you next time yes thank you i want everyone to please follow me on social media where we're i'm actually working on an amazing project right now with um i wanted to mention earlier with a 90s athlete i cannot mention but it is going to promote financial literacy to um to young disadvantaged youth communities here in the u.s so i'm very excited about that so please follow on social media and you might learn something yeah thank you so much everyone for tuning in and now you know why i have her in my inner circle (laughs) and i feel like the importance of community and as she spoke about trust the source but make sure you also are very aware of the people you open your home to open your heart to and just be aware And if you love the content that you're seeing, please follow us on all of our socials. And again, please support our girl, Brittany Mason. And until next time, please protect your peace and keep shining your light. See you.